wanted to endear myself to the fans early on here, so we brought Rob Green back as the under-18s assistant manager. Hello everyone and welcome back to the second part of Bouncing Back with Norwich City as we attempt to see how well we can do by only signing British and Irish players in order to get around those pesky post-Brexit work permit regulations that we just were all so thrilled about. And today we will be starting off our championship campaign. Can we can we get promoted? Can we do as well as Norwich seems to be doing in real life so far? Can we get back into the Premier League after one season of absence? And luckily, Rob Green is going to be here to help us. But he's not the only one. Some new signings have been made and some players have departed. Now, before we get to them, let's just quickly check on the uh, FFP issue we discovered in the first episode. We are apparently set to fail it despite having £88 million in the bank. Um, I mean, I've looked at the finances in game and in real life, and I can see why this has happened. Basically, in the season they were promoted to the Premier League, Norwich made a pretty hefty loss. They then made a profit in the Premier League season, but it wasn't enough to sort of tip this over because this is over a two-year period. Now, it should sort of work itself out as we get the gate receipts coming, and also, most significantly, the transfer fees of Ben Godfrey and Jamal Lewis have both come in, well, will both be coming in in sort of, we go to clauses, they're going to be coming in in installments for the most part. So Ben Godfrey, 3 million in installments every July. Now that will hopefully come in before the old accounts get done for this season. So we should hopefully be fine with that. Jamal Lewis is also uh, a lot of appearance-based fees and so on. So we should hopefully get a bit of money for that as well. Whether that's enough to fully tip it over, I don't know. Hopefully it'll be fine. But we have moved some players on. We've got a bit of money for them, which will hopefully help the books a little bit. First of all, Morris Leitner has departed permanently, not on loan to Huddersfield, but for 1.2 million to Cardiff. We discussed him last time. He didn't want to be here, and now he is not. And I've also moved on Joseph Dermich as well. He was on a very hefty wage, £20,000 a week. And uh, we're still paying a little bit, £2,300 a week, I think, as a contribution. But considering that he was signed on a free transfer, did very little in his solitary season at the club, and we've got 1.7 million for him. I think I'll take that, to be honest. Didn't really need him, we've got three other strikers. And then probably the most significant one, Alex Tetty has gone. Bit of a Norwich legend, really. He's been here for a very long time, eight years after being signed for £1 million from Ren. He's gone to Dijon for £600,000. My reasoning is well, we kind of didn't really need him. He was actually transfer listed anyway. We brought someone in that kind of plays his role and we have other players anyway, so kind of wasn't really needed. He Obviously a very experienced player, been here a long time, very influential in the dressing room, so hopefully we don't miss his presence too much. My main reasoning was basically £600,000 for a 34-year-old is something I'm always going to probably take. And some signings have been brought in as well. Last time we identified right back was kind of an issue when you had one fit one in terms of Max Ahrens and, well, we actually only had one right back at all in the form of Savvy Kintia. So we needed to get somebody else in on either flank given Sam Byram's lengthy injury. We've done just that. Tyrick Mitchell on loan from Crystal Palace for the season. The main thing I like about him, £500 a week. That's, I mean, that's that's going to comply with the FFP, isn't it? Crossing and dribbling, very nice. Pace is excellent as well. Good passing, really good tackling. Work rate's okay. The only issue is 10 marking, and that's not that bad, especially for this level. I think he will be a good, solid backup. May even end up starting, depending on how well Kintia does. Ethan Laird has also joined on loan. Similar kind of thing, £4,000 a week on loan from Manchester United. Backup right back. Can play on the left as well. Again, pretty well-rounded. Passing, marking, everything you'd really want for a fullback in terms of defending and also going forward. I like him a lot. Much stronger there, and I also wanted to get another centre-back in, and we have done just that in the form of Jack Watmouth. This is a permanent transfer from Portsmouth. He has cost us £1.4 which I think is a pretty good deal overall. Not the craziest attributes, um, and you know, nothing really beyond 13 for the key defensive ones, but that's pretty solid. It's pretty well-rounded in terms of passing, marking, tackling, heading, concentration, everything you'd really want. The only real issue for me is the 10 pace. I'd like him to be a little bit quicker, but I think that's offset by the fact he is either footed, which is a fantastic attribute to have for a centre-back. means that we can easily slot him in on the left or right, depending on who we need to cover for. 
out of the main two. And, and he has been covering already because uh, we've had quite a few injuries. Ethan Laird's already injured and Christoph Zimmerman is still going to be out for five to ten days. He's missed the first game. Going to miss the games today because of injury. Grant Hanley also got called up for Scotland duty and missed the first game of the season. So good job we got him in. And then finally, this one's not permanent. This one is another loan, but could be quite the difference maker. Sean Longstaff has joined on loan from Newcastle United. Fairly hefty wage, £20,000 a week. This is why I was kind of okay letting Alex Tetty go because the, yeah, this, this is a bit of an improvement. Obviously, it could be a bit better from the mental perspective. His determination of seven, which I've just noticed now, is pretty terrible. But everything else, work rate and teamwork, very nice indeed. Dribbling is excellent. Finishing is very good. Long shots too. Passing, tackling, marking, positioning. He can do pretty much everything you'd want from a box-to-box -box midfielder. So at the age of 22, has a lot to, lot to prove this season, I think. Obviously, broke into the Newcastle team. And when you consider, generally speaking, the standards of player in the Newcastle team, broke in, did very well, 23 games last season. They've let him go out on loan to the championship for this year, which is interesting, but I think he can do a very decent job for us. The season is well underway as well, and by that I mean we've played one game. Pre-season went pretty well, and uh, then we are through from the first round of the Carabao Cup. We beat Swansea on penalties after a 1-1 draw. Quite a lot of action in the game. We really should have won it in normal time really quite easily. We had lots of opportunities, seven shots on target, plenty of plenty of, uh, of possession, plenty of opportunities. Emi Buendia in this game, hopefully a sign of things to come. He was absolutely electric, running the show, as you would probably expect for a player of his calibre. But uh, obviously they scored with their first highlight, in fact, only highlight of the entire game. But we did get an equaliser through Ben Gibson, and then we won the penalty shootout. Luckily, having Tim Krul in goal. Penalty saving expert, of course. Not often that you sub on a goalkeeper specifically for a penalty shootout in a World Cup knockout match. But that man was one of them. And he saved the penalty from Jake Bidwell to give us the win. Which is good, obviously. I'm glad we went through and I'm glad we won our first match in charge competitively. But it has kind of mucked up my plans for today. We were going to play Huddersfield and Preston. But the second round has been slotted in here instead. So quite simply, what we will do, we will play Huddersfield Town, our first championship game. And then we'll probably rotate most of the side to play the Carabao Cup second round match. So you'll have an opportunity to get to meet the entire squad. All right, in terms of captain for the season, obviously Teddy gone. But uh, Grant Halley is already the captain. And I see no reason to upset the apple cart on that one. Zimmerman is arguably better. But if we just appoint him as vice captain, he will be playing in our strongest centre-back pairing. So that will make that'll be absolutely fine. Oh, Carabao Cup second round draw. We'll just we'll go through it. We've we've got Everton. So okay, I mean, a pretty pretty exciting game then. And it would have been a good opportunity for Josh Martin to play, um, but he's he's broken his leg, so he's out for five to six months. Nice knowing you, Josh. Really nice knowing you. I mean, not an integral player, but a player I would have liked to have used quite a bit this year. Um, not at the moment. We'll give him we'll give him a pep talk. Um, pat pat on the shoulder. Is that patronising? Uh, that seems a bit patronizing. He's, he's slightly positive from it. I mean, that's, that's better than it could have been. I should say as well, I have also set up the scouting assignments at the moment. So we are literally just scouting for eligible players, British and Irish players. And that is it. No sense really doing anything else. I mean, speaking of scouting and Everton, they've decided to steal one, one of our scouts. I mean, he's, I mean, Bob Arbour, he's 69. He's probably going to retire at the end of the season. But at the same time, he is really quite good. Fantastic attributes for a scout. I think, you know, we've we got to get the mind games in. We're giving him a new contract. See if he wants that. He's, he's fine. He'll probably still go to Everton. And as said, he'll probably just retire at the end of the season. But we're not we're not going out without a fight. It's all kicking off. Absolute drama. Middlesbrough have won the opening game of the season, beating Watford. It's nearly our turn. Can we get three points off Huddersfield? So the team then for this one is pretty much as strong as it would be. I mean, Zimmerman will probably be playing over Hanley, but uh, he's still out injured. Tim Cool is obviously going to be in goal. Wouldn't want anyone else in between the sticks at the moment. Kintia is going to be at left back. I didn't mention last time, but uh, as part of the rules, obviously every player who's already at the club can stay until the day they retire if they wish. That includes players who are only here on loan who are not British or Irish. So should we wish to, if we want to make this loan permanent, for Zabi Kintia, we can. The centre-back partnership to start things off then is going to be Ben Gibson alongside Grant Hanley. Obviously, Zimmerman will come in at some point. Hopefully, Max Aaron's, of course, on the right-hand side of defence. 
the midfield at the moment. Oliver Skip is going to be the base of the midfield. Sean Longstaff comes in in the box-to-box -box role. And Kenny McLean, the mayor of Norwich, is going to be on the left-hand side of midfield. Todd Cantwell is going to be starting on the left of the attack with Emmy Wendier on the right. And then Timo Puki, who missed the Swansea game because he was on international duty with Finland, of course, will be starting up front. Hopefully he can be as prolific as he was in the last championship season. And apparently we can name nine substitutes, which is I'm, I'm a big fan of. Can we get that as a permanent thing? One thing, of course, that because I'm managing the Premier League on this game so much, it's um, it's nice that all the fixtures in the championship line up with the real life fixtures because obviously it's properly licensed. So we can compare for at least the first part of the season. And in reality, Norwich won this game 1-0. So the, the pressure is fully on us. Obviously, Huddersfield, recent Premier League team, they've gone down and uh, they found it a little bit difficult. Nearly got relegated again, but still got some decent players like Christopher Schindler. Harry Toffolo, former Norwich player as well. So could could be an issue for us, but I expect to win because in reality, we did win this game. So with me in charge, things can only be an improvement. And we've got a highlight already, and it's uh, it's Huddersfield coming forwards, but it's well read by Aaron's intercepts and can look to counter. Not much support from him. In fact, Puki was the only player even remotely ready for that kind of attack, and he was pretty languid in it, but we're still going. We've managed to be a little bit patient. Skip or lofts it forward to Aaron's, who's all over the place. And he puts the ball in, and Kenny McLean cracks the crossbar. I mean, it's a good early chance for us. Can we can we capitalise on the early pressure? Buendia across. Can't find Campwell. It's cleared, but he gets another go at it. Can he find a different angle? He takes on the shot himself. It's a pretty weak effort. Saved by Pereira. And uh, we, we're giving away a penalty. There's a throw in from Harry Toffolo. Oliver Skip has just absolutely flattened O'Brien. And... I mean, they don't, they don't have Carl and Grant anymore. It's uh, Campbell. He's missed it. Absolutely blazed it wide. I, I did assume that it was Fraser Campbell. I didn't want to sort of jump to any conclusions. It, it was Fraser Campbell, so that would maybe explain why. All right, half time. Uh, good chances for both sides, but no goals. So I'm. I, I don't know. I I think I'm not. I'm not happy with the performance. Go out there and do something better. But Fraser Campbell. He, he's trying to run away, uh, and well. He's, he's found Ward and um, we managed to intercept. Good work from Kintia to get the ball away. And now we can break ourselves. Kenny McLean pressing forwards. Gives it off to Todd Cantwell. Seen nothing from him today. Can he make some sort of impact? Ball across. Emmy Wendia can't quite get there. Sean Longstaff. Oliver Skip. Kintia. Who, who's going to take this on? Cantwell goes himself. It's a weak effort. So Pookie, maybe tired from his international travel, has been uh, pretty poor today. So Adam Eder is going to come on. 65 minutes on the clock and it's Huddersfield who are looking uh, pretty dangerous as well. It's been a very even game to be honest, which is not not really what we want. Nabi Saar on the left. Aaron's has given away another penalty. What is this? Two penalties in one game. We got lucky the first time. Who's taking this one? Uh, Leandro Bakuna makes no mistake. 1-0 one, one Huddersfield. Great start. Well done. I mean, we got out of jail in the first half. We have not done so in the second. We've had some opportunities and we have not taken them at all. I think we're going to have to probably go for this because well, we'll see how this highlight develops. Cantwell picks the ball up from a good pass forwards from Ben Gibson. We have we have had chances. We've just not, not done anything particularly with them. Kintia beats his man trying to find Kenny McLean, who's getting very involved today. He has obviously hit the crossbar. Longstaff finds Adam Ada, edge of the box. Can he find a shot? He's gone a bit too far wide. Aaron's picks it up. McLean is there. It's been blocked again. That's two opportunities, him and Buendia, two good positions, and both times it's been blocked. We can't afford to lose to reality. We're going attacking. Hernandez is coming on. Sorensen also on as well for Skip, who's been pretty poor. We've gone attacking, we're demanding more, it's doing very, very little. We'll change the formation up, try and push forwards a little bit, but it's uh, it's gonna be it's gonna be a reverse, I think, on the real life real life scoreline. Maybe still some time. Sorensen finds Max Aarons. He's been probably our brightest player so far today. Can he find a cross into the box? He can, and that man has done it again. For the first time in this save but not for the first time for me on this game. Adam Eder is a goal machine. 
Good work by Sorensen, very positive from him. Aaron's finally gets a bit of luck and some help from his teammates. Either in the right place at the right time. Looks a mile offside to me. Looks a mile offside, but it's it's counted. It's gone in his first for the club. And I'll take a point if that's what's on offer at the moment. And indeed, that is all we get. And you know what? Considering the position we found ourselves in, I will take that. And with that man scoring, I am always going to be happy. 1.82 xg they had two penalties and we have done better than them from xg eight shots on target we should have won that game unlucky today maybe could have been a bit harsher but i think we were quite unlucky some well-timed blocks keeping us at bay adam edinet is first goal after coming through the club's academy you must share the fans delight as seeing a young player come through the ranks and make an impact at this level well yes that's a good portion of what this save is about so absolutely delighted well despite our contract offer bob has uh He's sadly gone, so the next game is added significance, really, in terms of scout-based poaching revenge. Right then, scout revenge time. We're going for a fully rotated side. I don't really care if we get knocked out, and a chance for you to see some of the other players in action. I did actually manage to reach the uh, League Cup final with Norwich in the Championship once, and then uh, lost it to League One Fleetwood, so maybe a repeat of that one as Richarlison goes close. Well, 27 minutes in, we haven't actually conceded yet. Sorensen... Off to Ethan Laird as we look to build something. Laird's still going. What a run from him. The pace on him is absolutely is staggering. He's, got, he's gone down the entire pitch. He's found Lucas Rupp. Gets it back. Puts the cross in. Can't quite find anybody. And uh, Everton trying to break. They've got James Rodriguez. Good golden ball winner. He's given the ball away. And the shot came in. I'm not sure who it was from. But Pickford makes a save. He's now immediately given it away. And goodness me. Vrancic <laughs> hits the bar. Terrible pickford s goalkeeping there from Jordan Pickford. Now at half time, arguably, we should be ahead. We've had the better opportunities. I'm very pleased with the performance. Well done. Keep it up. Nearly an hour gone and Everton give the ball away to Tyrek Mitchell. They're playing a full strength side. Hammers Rodriguez in the team. Luca Dina, Dominic Calvert-Lewin. And uh, we are we're not being outplayed by them at the moment. Um, Hernandez loses the ball there pretty easily. He looks pretty tired and Richarlison's in and McGovern makes a save. Still chance for us to win this. Everton haven't really been up to much. Rupp puts it into Ida. And Adam, it's Ida, not Ida. It's going to take some getting used to. Has got a, his second of the season. Starting exactly how I would dream he would begin the season for us. And his proper senior career in a Norwich shirt. Lucas Rupp works the ball nicely. It's another fantastic header from the young Irishman. And we are leading Everton. Well, Everton absolutely going for it. We're into injury time. Can we just hold it out? They've they've got a corner. Obviously, Hammers Rodriguez puts it in, and Yerry Mean has hit the crossbar, and we managed to get it away. Seconds left, and it's done. Everton nil, Norwich City one, and a completely rotated Norwich team has beaten a pretty much full strength Everton side. That's not what I was expecting, but I'm very, very pleased. Another goal for Ida did very well. He may well become first choice very quickly indeed. Mitchell also very impressive. I expect to see you all in training tomorrow. No, that was actually, that was really special, lads. I just, I just kid you, kidded you there. Um, yeah, can't really fault that, to be honest. And uh, not a bad way to start things off. I think we were quite unlucky against Huddersfield. If we had a little bit better rub of the green, we would have won that game. And then to go and beat Everton with a changed team... I'm liking that a lot, and I'm liking that this young man has already got two goals. Wanted on loan by Swansea. You, you, you're joking me, right? So I am liking that very much indeed. I mean, maybe we're going to win the Carabao Cup from the Championship. Who knows? We've already knocked out one Premier League team. We will be back next time for some more action. And I'm thinking, I'm thinking we haven't been to Carrow Road yet. We've had two away games. Let's have two home games. And I'm looking, I'm looking at October. And I'm thinking maybe Birmingham and Wickham, two games at home. That might be quite nice. Otherwise, maybe something like Wickham and Brentford, team that nearly went up with a team that just came up from League One. But there we are. Thank you very much for watching. Make sure you leave a like on the video if you're excited for the new series. Make sure you subscribe as well so you don't miss what happens next. And I will see you next time.